Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to what we can call the final episode of the Remarketing Expert Track. And again today, happy to have you here, Wolfgang Reinhold, Chairman of CAR, the European Car Remarketing Association. Now, what we'll do today is we'll look back a bit at this Remarketing Expert Track and also have a look on what comes next. So, Wolfgang, we've had um, every webinar over 200 people live a lot of people that have seen it afterwards uh the version that has been taped our first first uh, podcast has been looked at 2500 times which is quite uh, impressive so you was one of the two uh organizations that took this uh, initiative carried together with fleet europe what's your general view on this remarketing expert track in principle, after we had uh, after the podcast and the three sessions, we had nine experts um, from the car marketing industry, uh, from leasing companies, used car dealers, uh, experts, data provider, residual value. I think we covered more or less the whole sector, uh, which is uh, good. Very interesting uh, conversations I have seen. And um, we have to see where we are going into the next uh, level. COVID is not over, unfortunately. I thought we will have better news, but as you all know, sort of a second wave is coming uh, higher and stronger, or even less high and less strong. Uh, I'm not the expert uh, on the medication side, but we will continue. Uh, we have to continue. We have to inform the market what's going on. We have to be in touch with the market and especially with our members from the CARA Association uh, to give you the insights. Okay, great. Now, what we'll do today as well is we'll come back to a few of the more important uh, aspects that we've seen. And we're going to do this using some of uh, the board members of CARA. The first one is, in the first episode, we talked a lot about um, supply in the market, short-term um, rental being uh, key in what will happen with the stability of RVs. So that's why we've asked the question to uh, Ed Spitzer from Enterprise uh, about what is his view on a short-term rental market now, next year. And then afterwards, uh, David uh, Chaplow will have a look at, is this the same for light commercial vehicles? Yes or no? So let's have a look at their comments. Thank you, Wolfgang and Johan. While our entire industry has a long road ahead, we are very encouraged by some of the early signs of recovery we are starting to see. And we're hopeful that trend will continue. Moving forward, business travelers are likely to be driving far more for trips they may have previously taken by plane or train. Our business will be forever changed, but we are focused on the positive elements of that change. Renting a vehicle has become a go-to when customers return to travel. So our focus right now is making sure we can exceed the expectation of all of our customers. We view this not as a restart, but a reset for our business and a time for accelerated innovation. While no one can fully predict the future, we are very confident that we are well equipped to weather this over the long term because of our strong balance sheet and overall financial position as the only investment grade company in the rental industry. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, and in fact, demand in the LCV market has been on a positive trend for some time across all sectors, uh, short-term rental, long-term rental, new and used vehicle sales. And the impact of the last few months and the changes in, in how we all go about our, our daily lives has really only served to accelerate these positive trends and increase demand even further than, than it has been. Um, and for me, the outlook for 2021 is pretty much for more of the same. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, David and Ed. Um, indeed, short-term rental has been a lot uh, discussed about. How do you see this, uh, Wolfgang? Because that's not I, the easiest area of the no, uh, automotive industry. I think the biggest hit uh, in the area is on short-term rental. As you all know, hotels, travel, airlines, and the logical impact that having a rental car at the airport went down to zero in the beginning. It's recovering uh, slowly, but I think it is a long way to go, and we have to do 
all the best to, to support our members and to support the industry in short term that they're not getting uh, bigger hits and uh, we will inform you on ideas and situations and of course together with the short term companies we will develop some sort of insight to you. Okay, great, thanks. Um, another uh, topic that has uh, created a lot of attention and actually where a lot of questions came in but that we didn't have the time to basically reply was the one on residual value on alternative powertrains. What with electric vehicles? And for this we would like to go to another member of the board of CARA, Dirk Marco from Autovista. Please Dirk. My name is Dirk Marco Adams and I'm the CSO of Autovista Group. And with the support of uh, our editors in 16 markets, I try to answer these questions. Um, first of all, there are two major factors uh, who influence the RVs um, for BEVs in the future. One is the pricing for new cars, because the pricing is still immature and he ch the price change very often for some manufacturers. It goes up and down. That's not the normal pricing we see for um, combustion engines or normal cars. Uh, the second thing is the technology uh, advancement, uh, in particularly uh, on the batteries, because you will have in the future batteries with much wider ranges, uh, with long-term quality, um, would say, increase. So therefore, this is a second major factor who influence the RVs in the future for these cars. And last but not least, the third factor I would mention is the government support for new cars, because this is also not similar in all the markets. So you have market with a big support for BEVs and all rechargeable cars. Um, but we will see more cars in the future on the streets, that's for sure. And we see already, for example, in Sweden, 27% of all new registered cars in 2020 are rechargeable cars. Um, and for sure, a pan-European cross-border remarketing um, needs some special skills. Uh, because you will have, would say, a uh, fluctuation of demand, and you will have different, uh, would say, rules and guidelines of different markets. So it's not so easy um, in the future, um, but there will be, would say, an increase of demand on these cars. Um, I'm sure that Cara can also support you on some uh, training and other stuff for this item. Thank you. Thanks, Dick Marco, for this comprehensive answer. Now, Wolfgang, I heard something about uh, Academy or yeah. training. That is one of our new initiatives in Cara. We will give the final status during the Cara Marketing Forum at the 18th of November. Um, I hope by then we are more or less finished the whole project and uh, you can send your people over to the Academy, mm -hmm. as I said, at the 18th of November during the Cairo Marketing Forum, you will hear more. Great initiative again from uh, Cara. Uh, now we come to the end of this remarketing expert track. Again, I would like to thank the sponsors. Without them, this would not have been uh, possible. Also Fleet Europe, of course, for organizing. And Cara, I think Wolfgang, I need to give you the final word, certainly. Yeah, <laughs> thanks again to Fleet Europe for the whole initiative and a special warm hand to you, uh, Johan. You made thanks. a great job. Thank you. It was my pleasure to be on the second podcast here. I followed all the activities and uh, I'm pretty sure we will see you all at the 18th of November and we will update you with more information about the situation where we are in, in the car marketing industry. Thank you. All the best. Take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.